The genesis of the exhibition is with the Calvary from the Escorial and the restoration of that great picture, which has been a collaboration between the Patrimonio Nacional and the Prado, uh, has led to the revivication of this amazing picture, which can now be recognised as one of the great, great masterpieces of 15th century art and fit to belong with the Great Descent from the Cross. Work on the Great Crucifixion has been going on here for the last four years and it was decided to exhibit the Crucifixion before it left the Prado for several months and this was an opportunity to organise a Great van der Weyden exhibition around the Calvary and put the great masterpieces from the Prado together in this gallery and to borrow one or two very exceptional loans from Berlin and Antwerp. And that meant that we could reunite here all three attested paintings by van der Weyden. They have never ever been seen together before, not even van der Weyden himself would have seen these three pictures together. Taking the Calvary as a focus, we wanted to have the seven sacraments from Antwerp because the figure of Christ on the cross is more or less identical. And I wanted very much to show that the Calvary, which is a very, very late work, is a summation of Roger thinking about three figures. And he, I think, liked to uh, consider and reconsider beautiful figures and get them right and you can trace various figures through his work as he tries to get them better and better and better and you arrive at perfection in the great Calvary. I think you've arrived at perfection in many of these figures too. The Seven Sacraments Crucifixion is here not only because it relates to the Escorial Calvary but because it shows van der Weyden setting the gospel narrative in a contemporary setting. So he places the crucifix in the nave of a contemporary church so that the cross is absolutely enormous. It's the same height as the vault of the nave. It's probably 20 more meters off the ground. The figure of Christ is huge. The figures of the holy personages at the foot of the cross are also huge. In the church are taking place simultaneously all seven sacraments. So you've got the whole of life as disciplined by the church happening in one building at one single time. The figures in those scenes are on a completely different scale. Uh, and then above each of the sacraments is an angel, a differently colored angel on a different scale again. None of the figures is actually in scale with the church but you do have this uh, sort of summation of human life from baptism to death to the extreme unction on the right. Uh, um, and this is another aspect of van der Weyden's work. You also have a whole panorama of social orders so that you have beggars at the church door. And then right next to them to the right, you have the bride in marriage who is done up with jewellery and fur and goodness knows what, very, very expensively dressed young lady, but very close to the beggars, um, but in another panel. We also wanted to look at the fame of van der Weyden in uh, the Spanish and Portuguese kingdoms, and uh, we've tried to illustrate some of his importance in that direction also. For Spain, one of the attested works, the Miraflores triptych, we know was given in 1445 by John II of Castile to the Charter House of Miraflores outside Burgos, and it stayed in Spain until 1809, I think, when it was removed by a French general. And after a peripatetic career in France and England and Holland, it wound up in Berlin, and this is its first return trip to Spain, probably its only return 
trip to Spain because this is a quite unique occasion when we have brought together all these paintings. The other thing that we want, I wanted to do was to illustrate the importance of sculpture for van der Weyden. Um, and we've got two wonderful pieces of sculpture, the uh, figure of Lope de Barrientos, the Bishop of Cuenca, um, from Medina del Campo, uh, which is an alabaster sculpture of enormously high quality. And it must look rather like the best of the sculpture which was being produced in the Low Countries in van der Weyden's time. So this is van der Weyden working without any kind of interference from a patron, which is always interesting to see. The fact that he wanted to produce such a huge picture is interesting, I think, because another of the objects of the exhibition, as I see it, is to convince people that instead of uh, conceiving of early Netherlandish artists as painters who were working on a very tiny scale, very, very intricate detail, that this one and one or two of the others uh, loved working on a huge scale and the tapestry is also there to, because I think it was designed by van der Weyden to make this point about van der Weyden working on an enormous scale. I'm standing in front of what people think of rightly I think as the great masterpiece of van der Weyden, the Descent from the Cross, which of course is in the permanent collection here. Now the Descent from the Cross shows that van der Weyden had achieved a complete, complete mastery of representing reality. And it's a perfectly convincing representation of the descent from the cross. There are lots and lots of tiny details. You can take every figure and consider them all from these different respects. Uh, the statuesqueness, the immutability apparent but the real instability. And there are so many contradictions. And this is, I think, one of the secrets of van der Weyden's great art, that his paintings are instantly recognizable. They're instantly impressive. Uh, they look immutably beautiful. His command of geometry and pattern is such that you can't really bear to think that they could be altered. Yet, when you look again and then come back again and come back again and again and again, there's always something new to observe, some anomaly, some ambivalence. Um, and I think that that really means uh, that this continuous assessment that must go on